And I'm going to show you how I converted this IKEA shade, 27 inch long, with an electric motor purchased on Amazon. I'll put the link. So, what's in the kit? You get the remote and this Zigbee USB connect to your Wi Fi module thing. And this is the actual motor. It's very small. It could fit tubes of 17 millimeter diameter or larger with some adapters. The IKEA curtain or shade is a 25 millimeter tube, a one inch tube. And just for reference, that's the part number from IKEA. I'm not gonna try and pronounce it. And so that's it. So that tube fits very nicely into, or the motor fits very nicely into the tube. One thing I'm gonna do differently is I'm going to, if you see here, this rolls out the front, or this is the front of the curtain with this flat edge, but the, cur the shade rolls out the back. I want it to roll out the front. Easy enough to do since we're gonna be changing the two ends, this one and this one with the parts that come with the motor. So to make it fit, they ship two different colors of adapters, black or white. The white is 25 millimeter. This is uh, oof, an inch and a quarter, I think, but either way, we're not gonna use those. We're not gonna use any of these brackets that come in the kit because we're gonna retain the IKEA brackets at both ends. So this is all we're gonna use from the kit and obviously the, uh, the remote. So uh, here we go. I'm going to start by unscrewing the two screws at the top of the shade. And when you remove the end brackets by sliding them off the rail this way, uh, and you remove the shade, you'll hear the spring release, but that doesn't matter. We don't need that. So I'm going to go ahead and unscrew that. So the screw is backed out. You don't have to remove it and risk losing it. It's basically used to clamp down on the rail. It doesn't actually go through a hole in the aluminum. So I'm gonna see if I could do this with one hand. Slide this out. That's not working. Okay, I'm going to put down the camera and loosen it up a little bit more. Okay, so I popped off the two end caps here and here. And now you will see how these fit, these brackets, both of them, fit directly into these, uh, this Amazon motor. So one side has got this star pattern hole in it. So we'll use that with this bracket that has a star pattern. This one has a square. So this star Spin that around. There it is. Fits right in. Oops. Fits right in. So the only thing you need to watch when you put this in is just make sure that this the power recharge port, it's a micro USB. And there's a little push button here that you can hit with a with a paper clip. You just want to make sure that's going to be accessible once this is all assembled so you can charge it anytime without having to take it apart. So um, I'm going to go ahead now and pop off the cap to put on the, uh, the motor side. Or sorry, this, is, this basically is going to become the cap instead of the plastic IKEA cap on the, on the tube. This is going to slide inside. I will pause the video so I can pull the caps off. One quick note, I put this bracket back just to show this is the, uh, the going to be the motor side that fits in the star pattern of the motor. This is the front of the shade. I don't want the shade to roll this way. As I mentioned earlier, I want it to roll this way like this. So 
that means I have to remove this, which is not the star, to fit the motor. And then since I need this cap to be on the free side, I'm going to have to pop off the original one here. Get rid of that, don't need that, and put the cap from the other end over here. So I'll do that with a sharp object. You could use a screwdriver. I'm using a potato peeler. I don't know why. But I'm going to pop this off and show you the insides. Okay, so I pulled it off. I used a small tool to wedge it in there and pry this off. This one came off easy. And this is the spring that allows the shade to come back up from the standard setup in the IKEA. We don't need that. And this is the side, the free side. I have to use pliers on it. Broke my fingernail. Because for some reason this one was more difficult. The first curtain I did was not that difficult. It popped off pretty easy. So here we go. So I'll put this in here. Actually, before I do that. You'll notice that there's these grooves. Those grooves only go into the tube about a couple inches. After that, it's just a round tube. So I'll remember that. I'll explain why that's important later on when we slide the motor in. Um, another note, when you're doing this, try and keep your hands clean, especially if you're using uh, very light or pale shades. So uh, here we go. Okay, so now, like I said, because I want this uh, part to this flush area to be in the front, the driven side, which has the star, has to be on this side. The free side over here with this bracket, which seats this, the original cap that was on the other side. So I'm gonna go ahead and slide this in here. You gotta line up the grooves with the groove in the tube and um, give it a nice little push to get in there. Again, I need two hands. I'm gonna stop that and show the end result. And there we go. So now this is the free side. Well, free, it, it basically locks onto this. So, um... okay, I turned everything around since we're gonna be working on this end. The other end is already capped with the freewheeling side. So now we're going to put the motor in here, but you'll notice the part that's already mounted on the motor is quite smaller than the tube that we have here. So that's where these parts come in. These are the adapters for 25 millimeter. So I'm going to go ahead and slide this on. Oops. I have to remove this first. This cap will come here all the way to the end. Oops. All the way to the end make up the difference here so if it's snug on the on the tube this is going to go on the inside this is actually what's gonna this round part here or what will be this white part is actually gonna the part that drives the uh, the curtain rod or the shade rod this turns inside of this tube so I'll go ahead and unscrew this and then put in this adapter plate actually before I put in the adapter plate I have to slide this one on. Here we go. So I removed this part with a very tiny screw. You'll notice here it's slotted to accept this part here. Again, with the same slot, but before we put that on, we put this with this uh, flange side first. Slide that on. And there it is, nice and snug with the motor end. And then this. It's uh, same on both sides, so whatever works anyway is fine. Here we go. So that that's on there so now I'm gonna go ahead and put the tiny screw with the washer to cap that all off here we go so that's the end result for a 25 millimeter tube and you'll notice this once you line up the grooves slides right in 
and then again the groove. So that's what it's going to look like. Very clean. Problem is that when that part that's on the inside right now, I'm going to go ahead and turn the tube. It's just freewheeling. It has to grab the inside of the tube. This is where it gets a little bit wonky. You know, line up the groove and get this out of here. There's some hmm, some rust from inside the IKEA tube. Interesting. I'm gonna clean that off. What I'm gonna do is put wrap one layer of electrical tape. That'll be just enough to get enough friction to move this thing up and down. And uh, if ever you mess up the limits and this drives up too high and it gets jammed and the motor keeps turning, it's gonna slip, which is probably for the best because you won't damage anything. Problem is you're gonna have to reteach your limits or maybe one day eventually pop it open, replace the tape if uh, you end up on hitting enough limits. So uh, I'm gonna go ahead and wrap that and uh, show you the end result. There it is. You'll see there's those two grooves that allow it to slide into the tube with the two grooves. I cut this section here, wrap the tape inside this groove just so it to make it easier to slide in or else the tape gets all jammed up and wrinkled. So I'll try and get this in without disturbing the tape too much and we'll see how it looks. Again, I have to put the camera down to do this, but basically what I'm going to do is that's the cut in there's a groove here a groove at the bottom not very clear Groove there at the bottom so what I'm gonna do is this side that's not cut I'm going to rest it on that groove and then slide this in on the open end so crush the tape on the bottom and then slide this open end in here and see if I can get this in without disturbing it too much. First attempt, not good. So I'm gonna try again, put the tape a little bit cleaner, maybe cut both grooves. After a couple of attempts, I'm gonna try something a little bit different. Again, this is the second one I do. The other one I wrapped the tape around, it was fine. <coughs> the leading edge of the tape when I wrapped it around the circumference would get caught on the edge of the tube and make a mess. So I figure I'd try this way. That way there's the edge of the tube has to slide across the tape. It won't catch on it. And I put it only this way to leave the two groove sides here and here free to go fit in the grooves in the tube. So let's see how this works. Get this tape down good. And here we go. Let's see if I could do this with one hand. Probably not. It's already in a little bit, which is a good sign. I'll go ahead and push it all in. Okay, that went in. Now as a test, if you just turn this tube, because the motor is off right now, the whole IKEA tube should turn with it if there's enough friction, and it does. So that's perfect. We don't need a lot of force there, a lot of friction. It's just enough to turn a very lightweight shade. It's uh, almost a sheer shade, so I'm gonna go ahead, push this all in. Let's see if I could do it with the camera. Slide that in. Line up the grooves. There it is. All right, so that's what it looks like. So now we have this all finished. And I will put, oh, one more thing. I'm gonna back this up because this bracket, it's gonna be mounted in the bracket like this. I would like the charge port and the, uh, and the little push button to program it. I want it facing outwards. So I will go ahead and do that now. So just pop this out a little bit. Oh, actually, I don't have to pop it out. Don't even have to pop it out. When I put it in here, I just have to make sure that it's lined up the way I like it. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. I'm going to start by screwing this tight because might as well. 
And then uh, once I get the tube in, uh, we'll tighten the second bracket on there. All right, so this is what I was referring to. Get that port, and there's a little push button here. Hmm. Not sure if you can see that. Anyway, it's there. One thing I forgot to do, it's been a while since I did the first one. You see here, this is all nice and clean. By putting in the motor, it extends the tube a little bit further than what it was. So I can't get this in further than this. So what I'm gonna do is pop this thing off, the cap that gave me trouble the first time, and I'm going to saw, geez, not even a quarter of an inch. Where's that? There, not even a quarter of an inch. I'm gonna cut this, uh, this tube down so I can get this all nice and cleaned up. That is probably the most difficult part of this installation. So that's how much I plan to cut off that little mark. It's using a regular hacksaw. It could get messy. You don't want to dirty the curtains or the shade, sorry. So put a towel on this as you cut. Be sure not to knock this part. And it'd be nice if someone else was holding the other end. But because I like to make things difficult, I'm doing this on my own. So we'll see how it turns out. It should turn out fine. It's the second one I do. So that's only after only about a minute or two. So just got to do the last uh, I'm past the halfway point. So not too bad. And it's going down pretty straight. And the blade I'm using is pretty it's a very fine tooth metal cutting blade. So take your time. Shouldn't take too long. Just make sure it's as clean as possible. So after another couple minutes of cutting, there it is. This is the part, the amount I cut off. And I passed the vacuum, whoops, a couple of times. Keep this as clean as possible. And uh, yep, so that's it. I'll pop this back in and seal it up. So this is the cut end. I put the bracket back on. We'll see it matches up nice. Here, reinstalled this. Whoop, I'm getting blurry. Reinstalled this with, again, the port charge port and the button facing forward and I'm going to cut this the label not the curtain and then that's it you can see it doesn't make much noise very nice operation smooth what I'm not showing in this video is how to operate the remote, program the limits, up and lower limit, and also how to integrate with Google Home, which is a great feature because you can wake up in the morning and the curtains go up automatically and automatically at night. But I did have an issue because you can program limits directly on the shade or through the app. Um, I'm not sure if they work together. I think there's some kind of conflict between the two. So my limits did get messed up a little bit. So if anybody out there in the, in the YouTube land knows or how to program or has dealt with that issue, it'd be great if you could add a comment or maybe uh, direct me to a video. Thanks. And if uh, this helped you in any way, please consider subscribing. It's free. Thanks.